morning. Um, I'm Sylvina Petersolch. I'm the manager of the unified communication team at BNSF Railway. My team supports um, all collaboration infrastructure, so from the conference room, since people still meet person, in person, to the um, uh, collaboration, the virtual collaboration. So I have voice, audio conferencing, video conferencing, uh, call recording, and contact center. So several, several platforms that my team supports. So, what are we doing? BNSF is, a, is one of the leading class one US railroads. We operate from the Midwest all the way to the West. Uh, we're a Berkshire company, uh, have a, approximately 41,000 employees. Um, we move a fourth of the nation's rail freight, and, and depend on the freight is how the business units operate. For example, if you, um, uh, the, the, the business units that, um, that have uh, carry grain and coal and intermodal, those, uh, those carry unit trains. So basically the cars and uh, the train has the same origin, destination, and estimated time of, time of, of arrival. Uh, now for other commodities like uh, car loads, in that case is the um, uh, customer ship one car, uh, and so that car has an origin, destination, and estimated time of arrival, but is put in several trains to get there. Uh, so, so it's a very complex operation. We also are uh, limited to the rail. So some of the rails are uh, double track. Uh, for example, most of the ones that they are going from like Chicago to the ports, those are double tracks. In that case, uh, trains that go in different, in opposite directions can, can uh, cross without, without problems. But most of the territory is uh, one main, uh, main track. Um, in that case, uh, the trains had to coordinate the needs, so they had to actually go and stay in a passing until the other one goes by to continue. So as you can see, the, the coordination and the operation is very complex. Um, we carry many of the packages that you get in the mail, so, and you, you count on that packages to be on a particular day, so for us, uh, a velocity and um, estimated time of arrival is, is crucial. So how do we do that? We are actually doing this by using technology to uh, deliver the goods. So we have a pretty big technology uh, services and infrastructure team. Uh, we own a, a, a lot of our telecommunication infrastructure. We're a pretty like a little a small telco. We own our right of way, so it's easy to, uh, for us to uh, be able to lay fiber uh, and uh, put microwave towers and cellular towers. And we had to do that because in many places, as you can see, it's just not many things there. It's just there is no one, no other way of communication. So we actually had to build our own uh, telecommunications infrastructure. We have um, three major data centers uh, ge geographically dispersed um, and uh, uh, mainframe systems. It's, it's a pretty big de uh, department to support that operation. So what is our, um, how, how we went in our link journey? We started in 2008 um, when we purchased, actually um, it came, OCSR2 came in a kind of in a package with uh, UM, uh, with Exchange Unified Messaging. What we were looking for at 2008 was actually re replacing voicemail and OCS kind of came with it. Um, so we replace, we, we install uh, Unified Messaging, uh, we install OCS, and actually uh, move all our users, provision all our users with IMM presence. And we have 21,000 users, so just keep that in mind. I told you we have 41,000 employees, but actually we have 21,000 that are actually at a desk. So some other 20,000 don't actually have a desk. <coughs> so, um, what we did was provision all those users with IM and presence, and, and we started testing our, uh, um, the other features. <coughs> we, we decided to kind of put a pilot. Uh, so at the, at the beginning, we put our, use, our team, it was like 10, 10 people, it's, it's just try, try, try to check it out, how that works. Um, and it was just like word of mouth, <coughs> and, and people asking for all those features. So the pilot now, it's actually 3,000 people with enterprise voice and conferencing. Um, 
In 2009, we started also uh, looking at VoIP. Um, so we, we have Avaya PBXs. We started testing some sites with Avaya and decided that that was going to be our, um, our future for the telephony product. Until Link 2010 came along and, and we said, well, let's, let's test it out. We like the users actually have a good experience and they like it. They like the click to call. They like the usability. So let's see if, if, the, um, if Link is, will be an option for us in the field. Um, we, are, uh, we have some use cases that we need to support, several mm -hmm. legacy use cases, um, heavy analog. Uh, so we weren't sure that that was going to work, really. So um, we, we actually deployed in three sites. Uh, one was the Greenfield. We actually the, um, built a new intermodal plant in Kansas City last year, and that was a Greenfield. We uh, moved one of our sites to link, and we actually took one of the, one we thought that it was challenging, because uh, first our workforce, uh, it, it, was, it's a mature, it was a mature workforce, very traditional, uh, very established, uh, so we, we tested in, in that site. Uh, we, that site also had downstream gateways. Uh, we needed to support, uh, we support Tiho, that is tail and hop up, just to avoid all the long distance charges. So it was complex. Um, but to our surprise, the users really adopted very well. It's just they, they really like the functionality. So, and they, they like the phone. Uh, we didn't give them headsets, obviously. We just like took a phone, put a phone. Uh, but, uh, but the adoption was really good. We have a fully uh, redundant systems. We have, uh, they are in, we have two pools, uh, one in each data center. Uh, we have uh, six front ends, edges, so it's, it's completely redundant. Um, and in failovers, that's, that's one thing that if I had to give you some advice if you're looking at Link, um, just, just keep that in mind. I know that you can install Link in a box, but um, just, just keep that in mind that, that this, the tool is very resilient if you, if you actually deploy it in, a, in, a, 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 in high availability and DRs. Um, we, have, we install a SCOM for monitoring and alarming, and, and I had to say that since we installed it in 2009, or the, it really, we have five nines. It that, it's not, doesn't mean that doesn't fail. It means that the tool is smart enough to adapt. Um, we have a, a, a couple of months ago, um, actually, and, and I, th I think that one of the SQL servers or something like that cannot go hang, and, uh, and the whole pool fail over to, but aut automagically <laughs> fail over to, to the other one, um, and no one had any issues. Just voice, I was in a call when that happened, and the voice didn't drop. Uh, now, the only issue that I want to ask Microsoft to change is that it displays a big red letter <laughs> saying you are in DR mode. So all the customers call saying we are in DR. <laughs> but, and I say, well, what, did, did something happen? No, 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 I'm just telling you, this thing sit here. And I go, oh. <laughs> so, but we just uh, uh, reboot the server, I don't know what they did, but they fixed it pretty quick and everything came back to, mo came back to normal. So. Um, so for us, it has been a pretty good experience. So we're still in Link 2010. So I told you that we do that complicate, um, complicated operation through technology. And one thing that we do is to communicate, communicate, communicate. That's the way that we can keep those, those trains running. We can make sure that everyone knows what is going to happen when those trains are going to meet because they cannot be late. Also, is safety is that we are in a very unforgiving environment. It's just it's very um, we, we really need to make uh, awareness of others of what's going on in the railroad. So this has been the 2013 volume. The interesting trend because uh, we are very voicemail centric. We we run with voicemail. So but we start measuring to see how how voicemail is doing as we implemented Link. And one thing that I had to tell you, and we didn't train the users at all. And, and our, our workforce is mature. And that's the, that's the stats. See how IM is going up? They kind of pick it up. Uh, and, um, but at the same time that IM is going up, look at voicemail. Voicemail is kind of going down. Uh, so that's one 
trend that we're following and, and see how the, how the tool actually is changing how people uh, collaborate. Um, now the new things that we're trending is the desktop sharing sessions. While it's still pretty tiny, it's, it's kind of doubling through, the, through, the, through time. So they're, they're picking it up. They're, just, they're figuring out that, oh, I, I have another button there and just, pick, and just see what it does. And most of the users are now provisioned with the rest of the features. So uh, that's why we're measuring I am and present at this time. Now, we are very heavy in audio conferencing. Um, this this uh, start on audio conferencing is not just managed by Link. It's actually we host our uh, internal audio conferencing. And it happens all at the same time. It's all in the mornings. As uh, people get all in a bridge, Monday through Saturday at 6 a.m. in the morning, coordinate the operations, go their way, get back to another tomorrow at 6 a.m. in the morning, and that's how, that's how they go. So that, that is the patterns that we're following and see how maybe later with the tool we can actually change something to improve that collaboration. So this is our current voice network. It's, uh, the, the purpose is not that you can actually see what is that it says, but it's just to, for you to understand the complexity. Um, it's kind of in a web-like, it's all TDM. Um, it's a mix of uh, NEC and Avaya. Um, they're aging, uh, so, and, and, and it's, the dial plan is just crazy. Like I, I told you, it's just we run our own network to uh, avoid long distance. If you plot this in a map, it actually overlays the rail because we really need to keep communication to the train at all times. Um, and what happened when I take one in the middle out? Oh, I'm sorry, push the wrong button there. Um, so if I take one of these ones in the middle out, just the rest of the network is, 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 is blind. So um, it, we know that we had to do something that we need to prevent issues because also the network is aging, so we don't want that node in the middle to fail. Um, so we started looking at our voice transformation a couple of years ago. With the success of Link in the field, we decided that Link is was going to be our platform for the future. Um, so this is, this, is a, this is our challenges that I was telling you. Now, I told you we have 41,000 employees. We have 20,000 people at the desk, but we have 30,000 extensions. That means that the other 10,000 that they don't have a desk, they actually share a phone. So, and those people are not just, the, like they're their person is a role. So we have a train master, or we have a, a switchman, or we have, um, uh, it's, a, it's a role. So we had to actually, when we deploy Link, we had to think about that, uh, uh, how we resolve the role to give them all the channels to a role. So uh, what, after we decided Link was going to be our platform, uh, we knew that First, we wanted to be in Link 2013. There are some key features that we're looking for that is everyone is looking for. It's mobility, it's Skype integration. Uh, we want the Link room systems. We have, we're very dispersed, so we need to, make, to, to have the tools to put those people together. Um, we do want centralized zip trunking. Uh, um, to, to what we're trying to avoid is, is to go, how to replace the uh, tail and hop off uh, to avoid the long distance. If we have centralized zip trunking, uh, long distance costs are going to be, um, I, I, it's going to be more cost effective and also it's going to be less complex. So ho hopefully that will help. Um, and we had to go and rip and replace 213 TDXs. We're going to put survival branch appliance when um, in, in places that need it. Um, and we had to start collapsing in order to do ta that upgrade. We had to go from the edge in. So obviously the nodes, the, the bigger nodes are going to be the last ones to come out. Our strategy right now is going to be to take a phone uh, and replace it with a link phone and give a headset. Uh, what we have seen is, and, and we try both ways, um, we, the sites that we did, we actually did that. Uh, we put a phone and a headset and, and people after a while 
they got used to the headset and they didn't want the phone. But we did it backwards, say, so, okay, let's go technology services. They should, they should shoot that up to a headset. <laughs> so, and we give them just headsets and it was a complete meltdown. It's just they, they didn't adapt, they didn't like it, uh, they wanted their phone. So we gave them the phone and it was a few months later, say, well, I really don't need a phone. So, uh, so, so we're going to start with the providing phones and headsets and, and maybe people that they really get used to the headset take that phone and maybe just put it to someone else and rotate. But at this point, that's, that's what we're planning. So we call these the vortex of the sequence of events. It's, it's kind of a, when you're planning to, when your microwave breaks and, and you wanted to, you start looking at replacing it and, and ended up just like upgrading the whole kitchen and that's kind of, it went here because obviously we look at enterprise voice and, and our, and our um, goals were to consolidate the systems. We wanna make sure that they reduce the footprints and the complexity. We want to centralize them uh, to be more manageable. Um, we did look at the uh, business case of, of running TDM and run, running IP, and we saw the benefits of converging the network and the savings were substantial. So after that, it start, it start, once, once we have those goals and we say, okay, enterprise voice is linked, so what are we going to do with video? So. Um, I w we have a very old, we have about 25 sites that uh, is, an, is an old um, system based on ATM, and ATM network is, is actually being replaced by IP. Um, so what are we going to do with that network? Are we going to replace it? Are we going to just use link? Uh, so we come up with a strategy of, of um, uh, making sure that everything works together. Uh, so. We, will, we are going to have a video, a link, in, um, link in video for people that have, they're in, at home or they, they have their PCs, but uh, we're looking for the mobility client for people that are remote or uh, in conference rooms, uh, some of the big ones have a Polycom because it has the integration. That's what we decided, well, let's go Polycom um, because it has good integration. And now that we saw the link room systems, that is another option for us. So. So we said, well, we had to go to the site to upgrade in for voice. Uh, since you are there, why don't you just add video? That's how the strategy is coming. My, my mandate is coming. I said, since you're there, just add video to it. Uh, so I said, okay, sure, no problem. It shouldn't be a big problem. So we're going to go and, uh, and upgrade the, the video rooms at the same time. And our workforce is not, is not video. They don't, they don't video. Um, they are not used to, they, the comments that I have is that people don't need to see each other to talk to. Their audio conference is a big audio conference. But there are a few use cases that when I talk to them about, they are they're very interested. Um, one thing that we are looking for the mobility clients is because one of the use cases that, that we can apply is in case of derailments. Um, when, when we have derailments, people go take a bunch of pictures, send them by email, and there are people in a room, kind of in a, in a war room, trying to see what they had, what, who they had to pull to actually go and, um, and assist. So when I told them, well, what, uh, what if instead of taking pictures, I give you something that you can actually video and the people in the room can see? And, and actually when they tell you to, to go and, and, and move right or left, you are there and you can show them. Uh, and that's, a, oh yeah, that is cool. Yeah, I, I like that. Just that, that, that I will support upgrading the video rooms to support the use cases. Um, we have mechanical shops. Uh, we actually repair our locomotives. So the experts, you can imagine, where these purse. So sometimes I have experts that they can repair one kind of equipment in one um, in one office while the equipment broke in another side. So. Those kind of things, I say, well, maybe someone else can guide you through the repair. And those are the use cases that people got excited. So that's how we got the approval to actually um, upgrade the video systems too. So we had voice and we added video. And the next question was, well, what are you going to do with the contact center? So I was like, well, what contact centers we have? We currently have it in Genesis um, IVR. We have the IVR on that. but. All the other platform is in Avaya, so um, all the CTI portion. 
So on top of the, the we just do invoice now. So now the customers are also asking for chat and email and co-browsing uh, and, and maybe be able to contact us through the mobile phone. So they are asking, they are getting exposed in the, in the consumer side, so they are asking to be able to work with us in the same way. Um, so um, we're, we're, we're looking at um, what are we going to do with the users that they are actually contact center users? Are we going to keep them in a different platform? They are going to have a different user, user experience. Um, it wouldn't be nice that if I'm chatting with a customer and I'm not the expert, I have to bring somebody else that I just pull it from my content, bring it into the conversation. So a few things were, um, were added to the requirement uh, and like again, since you are upgrading the voice network and you're upgrading the video, why don't you just add the contact centers to it? Um, so, so we did an RFP to evaluate the, um, to ev evaluate solutions, um, including keeping <coughs> in the Avaya. And we decided to go with the Genesis contact center because of the link integration, also because it's kind of PBX, PBX agnostics and in the future it can even uh, run on top of link. So the project was kind of growing. As, uh, so the next question was like, well, are you going to do it hosted or are you going to do it on premise? So we went and read the book about the cloud that said that you saved like 50%. I said, oh, that's a no brainer. We're going to go cloud because it's just you save so much money with that. So we evaluated queries and we found that actually there wasn't a cloud option uh, uh, that satisfied our needs. We, we needed something very customizable. Um, we needed to integrate with Office 365 for Exchange because we, we just moved there. Um, we wanted to have that Genesis link integration. Um, so we developed a very detailed business case and say, okay, what were, are we going to stay on premise? Uh, what, are the, what are the reasons why we stay on premise? What are the reasons that we could go host it? And, and really, we, we have the talent. I have uh, very talented engineers, very deep in link. Um, they wouldn't have any problem upgrading their voice infrastructure. It will be a challenge because obviously it's a big project, but, um, but really w we, have that, we have that talent. We did a, a very detailed business case evaluating, okay, staying on premise and going host it. I, I can tell, and we, the, the railroad is very analytical, so, so I, it was very detailed. I, I know how much it will cost the uh, power and cooling for a VM. So if you want to know how I did that, but <laughs> we did that. So it was very detailed. Um, and we didn't, because of how we operate, we don't have to, um, uh, we, we own our audio conferencing equipment uh, and uh, the data centers, we already lease the infrastructure. So. So the business case didn't, didn't quite made really big savings to kind of swing, swing the decision. Um, so why, why would be go hosted? Uh, well, the, the main thing is that it's not our core business. We are there to run trains. It's just not, not there to run our voice network. Um, so our, our um, um, CIO actually put a, a, a goal for us. Uh, about the railroad 2020. And, and what she told us is just like, look at that statement, and based on that statement, tell me how would you do it? How, how would you stay on premise or would you go host it? Um, so, so there are a few key things here, like deliver greater business value, market growth, efficient delivery. Th those goals weren't going to be attained by us running the infrastructure. That, that's, that's not, a, we, we have the knowledge to actually take that tools and move it further, but um, we, can, we can concentrate on that while we can leave the, running the infrastructure to, to someone that is actually their core, uh, their core business. So with that, um, we selected AT&T uh, as a partner um, and I have here uh, David Hart, he's our chief link architect assigned to the project, and he can explain the proposal. Uh, we, we're going with them now, right now to start the project, so Thank David. Thank you. Thanks, Alvina. Uh, my name's Dave Hart. I'm a chief architect with AT&T Consulting, Carver UC Crassus. 
Uh, just a little background about myself. I've been uh, working with Unified Communications with Microsoft Technology since LCS. Uh, I've had the opportunity to work on our global, largest global deployments uh, uh, in 192 countries, 100,000 seat plus uh, of, of both OCS and uh, Link as well. Uh, so I had the pleasure of, and I'm still having the pleasure of working with BNSF today uh, on their deployment of Link. Uh, so BNSF had three different initiatives. They had a Link upgrade initiative, initiative that an Office 365 initiative, and they also had a move to a new contact center solution. Uh, so with AT&T, with our hybrid solution, we consolidated those initiatives into a single initiative, uh, and basically providing them um, in two of our data centers, a hosted Link and a hosted Genesis solution. Uh, the Genesis solution is integrated with Link with the UC connector for Genesis for IAM presence and passing voice. Uh, what's unique about our hosted service uh, is that we also offer the opportunity for co-location services. So you can put your own firewalls, your own routers in there and manage them yourselves between our service and your, uh, your network. Um, it's also very beneficial for BNSF because we also allow other vendors, so, uh, like MPLS connections into our data center. So they have actually four MPLS carriers that are all coming into the co-location facility and basically we're routing those, obviously those connections within the co-location. Um, there's a high, it's a high availability solution, two data centers, one east coast, one west coast. We have, at t has 38 global data centers uh, around the world today. Um, it's, like I said, it's high availability, so we have failover not just for Link and Genesis, but we also have failover for our IP SIP trunking as well between both data centers. And we have the integration with Office 365 as well, so for voicemail. That's all integrated as part of this solution. Uh, at t is a dedicated hosting, so there is no shared infrastructure. It's separate firewalls, separate routers. Basically, one of our customers called it a pod that we have, uh, so it is highly secure. Um, we also, uh, with the integration with 365, Genesis, and Link, we can provide those services to all BNSS end users, if they're contact center agents, regular users, and we also integrate with their on-premise CRM uh, solution as well. Uh, our Link hosted service provides all workloads, so it's E911 called Mission Control, so we provide all the function and features that you would require. Uh, if you wanted to put a faxing solution or co-location, you could do that as well. Um, like I said, it's very customizable. It's this, this hybrid link uh, solution. So we're supporting BNS BNSS vision of their three Cs to, to um, consolidate. So take those disparate systems, bring them together, obviously based on link, um, to actually um, centralize, putting it into our secure data centers, all those, those different systems as well. And obviously to converge their voice and video uh, onto an IP network as well. Uh, and this really aligns, you know, the hybrid approach really allows them to do that, to realize uh, cost savings by leveraging their investment in Office 365 or voicemail, to be able to put Link into our cloud, uh, to integrate on-premise uh, with this hybrid solution to their existing CRM, to their Polycom video integration as well on-prem. So it really, this hybrid really allows them to really be more efficient, to drive efficiencies within their organization, and it allows, allows them to realize their vision of their Railroad 2020, which is connecting people and information with the technology. Thanks, David. Yeah. So, so what is the plan? Uh, we're going, we started a few months ago. We actually put a, a goal or a mission because these, these, are, big pro these are big projects with a lot of people. Um, that need to participate, many teams that had to participate. So we want to make sure that everyone was aligned. And, and you can and read it, but the, the things that you won't find in this statement is says anything, nothing about hosted. It doesn't say AT&T or us, or it says experts. Um, we want to make sure that we focus on quality. That's, that's our goal, goal is, is quality and customer satisfaction. That's, that's one thing that we want to make sure that we attain. Um, and one thing is that it's better that we have fun at the, in the journey because it's a very long and tedious project. So, so we want to make sure that we, we give that uh, message just to at and and to our team. It's just we're one being happy family <laughs> because it's going to be a very long project. And it's still our network. It's just like we are not, we are not leaving the we're not giving the baby for adoption. We're, we're leaving it with a babysitter. So, so is, it still, <laughs> is it still our baby? So, 
Um, so how we are going to do that? Uh, for voice, for link, uh, we're uh, in finishing the discovery session. Uh, we're going to, at and is going to build a link infrastructure in their data centers where it's going to put centralized tip trunking. We're going to migrate all the 20,000 users to the hosted solution. And we're going to start developing, we, we're going to target from all those um, sites, uh, we're going to target five that they are different uh, to make sure that we develop that the workbooks or, or best practices. We want to make sure that everything is, uh, is not one of a kind. Once we finish with this project, it's not one of a kind. Everyone kind of has the same, the same manual to go and install them. Um, uh, it's going to take a little bit of tinkering to select those sites because we, wanna, we won't be able to, uh, we have to do some rerouting to make sure that we don't take the node in the middle and everything goes blind. So uh, we, we need to make sure that we, we kind of reroute to select them. Uh, careful. Uh, and after that, we're going to migrate a site a week for the following four years. So it's four years and we think that it's, it's a long project, but it's actually a site a week. In the contact centers, um, uh, at and install a genesis in their contact centers and they are actually doing the, all the link integration. Uh, and we're going to migrate uh, approximately in between 12 and 18 months um, all our uh, contact centers to uh, a enabling multi-channel. Uh, and actually, we're also moving our IVR that we have on-premise also to at and And that's crucial for us. The IVR actually is crucial for us because we actually call crews through the IVR. It's our, our automated out outbound is how we are using it. Um, so what is BNSF going to do? We are actually going to focus on the customer. That's what we wanted to make sure that we do. I told you that we didn't, we didn't train the users in Link, and that was the adoption. Uh, but this time, we really want to make sure that we go, we go to the site. We, we, we create that uh, momentum on, on changing the phones, uh, understanding how they use it. Uh, because I told you, there are some people that actually has a phone and they kind of use the phone as a common area phone. Well, let's see how, how we can do that. Let's see how can they, um, can we put a role and, and we change the way that the, the, the business process work. How can we improve that? How can we extend the tool and actually incorporate it in our, um, in our operational systems? Maybe that, that will be another thing that we can do. So we're going to, at this time, what we're planning to do on the customer training is, is go and train the trainer and find those champions that can actually, they're the ones that pick it up quickly and can be somebody at the side that actually can help out others. We're going to put some training tools. Uh, we're going to create uh, the SharePoint. Uh, and uh, since we moved to Office 365, we have Yammer. So we thought that about creating like a board so people can actually share stories and, and, and actually can give us the feedback because sometimes it's hard for us to, to understand how they are using it or how, how can we make it better. So through Yammer, I think that we can actually keep that, that communication moving forward after we, we leave. Um, we're going to do site visits. Um, we're actually going to go side by side and install them and train them. Um, and we're going to measure adoption, just to make sure so the same way that we were measuring before and seeing how the, the, the patterns change. Uh, so we can calibrate, we can calibrate the training or can actually improve the tool, um, it just integrate the tool with something else to make it better. Uh, our goal is to keep that, that workforce connected because like I told you, they connect at 6 a.m., they disconnect, and they connect next morning 6 a.m. So what can we do to keep them connected throughout the day so they can actually improve, improve the operation? Because obviously things get a little bit discoordinated eventually if they don't keep track of, of each other. So um, we have to make sure that we, we do it in a safe manner. Uh, mobility, we see it is great, but we have to see how we can actually put it in place because we're in an unsafe environment is, is, a, is a very unforgiving. Those are big, it's big equipment. You have to be very aware of your surroundings. So we want to make sure that we provide mobility, but it's not that it makes, it distracts them from their jobs. Uh, and like I said, it's like we, we wanted to leverage the business process and see how, uh, how we can keep them connected. 
Till we die, there's the train. <laughs> We're moving. Do you have any questions? We have a Skype uh, giveaway logo, unspeakable value. <laughs> Yeah, I can I can repeat if you want to. Uh, your one site a week is uh, what's the average size? Well, we have different sizes. There are some that the, well, the ones that they are dispersed. It can be maybe that they are five people, but it's a crew change <coughs> point. So it just depend. The size sometimes doesn't doesn't imply complexity. We have 500 people sometimes, a uh, thousand to uh, five people. But like I said, it could be a crew change point, and that site is critical. So in these yard offices, are you reusing the NEC equipment as your gateway, or are you no. replacing it with an SBA? We are replacing it with an SBA. We're actually at this point uh, thinking this audio cost, uh, the manufacturer we're going to put. But I do think that based on what we look, that not, many, not all places may have an SBA. Depend on the network redundancy. If the network sure. is redundant, we may not even need an SBA. Right. So um, you're going to utilize local trunking where you have SBAs, obviously? If there is not redundant MPLS connection, the third voice over the WAN connection, yes, there will be local Oh, so you're going to convert some of these far end locations using the SIP centralized? Correct. Inbound and outbound? Like DIDs uh, inbound? For those sites that don't have the inbound and outbound, yes. Wow, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Question for you, the um, four year time frame sounded like a really long time and, and probably is, is, is acceptable for, for the voice. Um, for Link, will everybody get Link 2013 quicker? Yes. Or, okay, because so, so I think about the collaboration and the, the new features between 2010 and 2013. Yeah, so everyone will have 2013. Well, actually, the first thing that we're going to do is to migrate the, all the users to the 2013 gotcha. infrastructure. But voice will be enabled as we go to the, to the site and, and upgrade into voice. One thing that I forgot to mention is just we're, uh, I'm part of, my team is part of telecom. So we work with the IP team. Um, our, our IP team is actually our uh, sister group. So, um, oh, brother, I don't know. <laughs> but um, they are actually have a plan that is similar to, our, to ours to go and upgrade the IP network before we actually go. So, so they, they are kind of, they're actually they are, they are two years ahead, ahead of us. So we know what sites they are already IP ready to go for us and enable them with voice. We, we want to make sure that when they, we enable them with all the features that they actually the user experience is good. Thanks. Are you able to share any of the anticipated cost savings as a function of the four-year PBX replacement plan? So the the savings were primarily our savings were primarily on the TDM um, the TDM networks, like basically moving that to IP. And actually, it was a, a forty percent in OPEX savings based on uh, IP conversion. That's that's why actually. The, it's four years is the long plan. Actually, we won a five. Um, upper management, when they saw the, the savings, they said, oh, can you do it in three? And I was like, well, <laughs> that's a little tough. We have the contact center, the video. So um, and we came up with four. And, and that's because of the substantial savings on the conversion. It was a 40% roughly. And I forgot to give my gift giveaway. What, uh, what's your plan for a Genesis failure? What are you going to do with those calls? How are you going to route those to somebody? Uh, how do you keep them from getting black holes? Yeah, so it, it's an active-active architecture. Uh, it's coming across our IP flex trunk, and, and we actually can reroute those calls with, with about a, less than a second delay to the other call center. So you're doing that in the cloud? We're doing that in the cloud, in our, in our data center, is how we're handling it. And 
And that diagram I showed was a very high level one. There's some deep engineering documents below that that actually talk about the MPLS and what part of its IP flex, which is our SIP trunking service, and how that interconnects between a different call center. So that Genesis is active, active. So we are definitely accounting for that as well. And, and the other thing too, I, I think it's real important, you know, when we work with any of our customers, and specifically BNSF, is really understanding your call flow paths as well. Uh, because, I mean, it was really critical for us to have their MPLS connections in our data center, uh, especially for Link and for uh, Genesis. Because if they had kept it on their, their premises, which was an option, we would actually have to hairpin calls, like conferencing, anyone coming to a conference through their data center, then come up to ours. So we're really cognizant of two things. One is make sure you have the best experience you can uh, with, with Link and Genesis, and also minimizing the impact on your network with codecs. Because we, in, in all our architectures, we try to minimize putting G711 over your WAN. It's RT audio. If we can do SBAs and do not even go out to the WAN, we will as well. So, I mean, those are some key things that you really should be aware of as your call flows, especially not just internal call flows, but when we start talking about edge and robot access and where the MRAS service sits. I mean, there's, we, we had one customer come to our booth um, talking about load balancing uh, DNS for the edge. And, 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 you know, it looks great on the outside. It keeps it all within region. But the challenge is uh, with MRAS and internally what it does to internal call flows. So uh, just be aware of that. Okay. okay. Any more Sorry? questions? Well, I guess it's not really a question. I, I just wanted to uh, just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, uh, my name is Livio Pugliese. I am a product manager at Genesis for oh, Link Integration. Okay. Yeah. And so if you have questions about how that works, we have a booth as well. Okay. So come by. Mm. Yeah, it was pretty neat, the integration. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I still have a question to the enablement of the audio. Would, as you said, your network is two years ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would it be not an option to allow audio video before you deploy enterprise voice? Because a link to link is always mm -hmm. uh, a, a IPT call, will never touch the enterprise voice environment. It'd be peer-to-peer. -peer. The challenge is with a WAN link. So if it's a site that hasn't been updated yet, so they might not have enough bandwidth to do a peer-to-peer -peer video call. Outside, I mean, honestly, at the site, that's fine if you want to enable it locally. And then you could block at the router for them actually coming off the, off the premises. But that has to do with ACLs and things like that. We've done that for other customers. It's not very clean. It's very management intensive. Uh, so when you enable peer-to-peer -peer video at a site, which is what I think is what you're alluding to, so they could do peer-to-peer -peer video at a site or... So if I would be a customer on your side, which is four years away from oh, Link, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. I would be really unhappy. <laughs> no, no, understood. And, and, and that's really internally, I don't know if the business unit can, can say we want to go early and pay more. Uh, I mean, that's an eternal Yeah, shocking. so we, we, will have to, we will have to actually address that when, when it comes to it because, yeah, it's a lot of, like I told you, our pilot was 10 users and grew to 3,000. So we see that. So what we do, Today, when, when the site is ready, those 3,000 users are there, they are there. We enable them with, with voice uh, if, they, if the site can support it, voice and video. Uh, but we don't take the, we don't, we don't call that site done. We, we, we enable the users, but, but uh, they still have their phone. So basically, they don't have the 911, they don't have the trunk, we didn't pour the numbers. So we still give them the features, it's just we don't, we don't call it check, it's done. Mm. So. Yeah. Well, we, we do. We did connected link with our PBXs, so basically you can actually uh, dial in. Yeah, dial yeah. in. You can you can do that. Yeah. So so it has. We have some because at this point the three thousand that they are enabled, mm -hmm. they just put link meetings all over. So and we need to make sure that those people can participate. So we did some integration in between our NEC and Avaya PBX and link currently. So, so they. But see, they, no yeah, in that scenario, they, they wouldn't be able to do an on on uh, on net call into that because they're not they're only enabled for I'm in presence. So if, even if they get the invite, their only option is to dial. So is that they dial in? That's it. So we avoid having that bad experience. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah, but we have some some people that they kind of go in a temper tantrum because they kind of have all the features and I, I want them why they have it and we don't have 
It's the, but you had to set up the expectations to look if the network is not yeah. ready, you won't have a good experience. But what, I understand. But one of the risks that we, we all have is traveling users because if they're enabled for all the features and they go to a site that has poor bandwidth without call and mission control there initially, there, there's a challenge there for mm -hmm. us. And right now with the IP transformation, all the sites are getting new, MP, new MPLS connections or upgrades and they're also getting re-IP'd at the same time. So there's multiple projects, projects going on at the same time. There is with the server SDK. So you can actually write with the server SDK where you can actually pull against a SQL database and say if they're at these IP subnets, block these features. Yeah, your tail end hop off. If it's mm -hmm. a closed user yeah. group, you're fine, but as soon as you go out there, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes, you, with the server SDK, you can actually put that logic into that. There was a session earlier this week on it, so if you see the replay, they'll, they'll talk about that as well. Yeah. And there is sample scripts out there already that will actually show you how to do some of that. I'm very familiar with that from legal and regulatory restriction perspective because we had to come up with some creative solutions for some of our customers. And thankfully, you're all in North oh, America, yeah, I'm so, so I'm I'm so, so glad that I'm domestic yeah. after hearing all your problems. But, but let sure. me just tell you that <laughs> I, I've been in very unique environments like oil rigs and, and chemical plants, and I've seen ISDN flavors I never knew existed before. And I always learn something different. And, and one of the things I learned, I think, week three is that we were talking about IP hard phones and being able to deploy IP hard phones versus soft phones. And there are union requirements that people have an actual physical phone. So I mean, that was something else I learned as well. So uh, yeah, yeah. We, we do have a lot of union requirements. Yeah. That's one of the things also why we had to support voice mail and faxing is because of union requirements. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's hope for you, that's right. Does AT&T manage your network, your delivery network as well? And if so, how are you ensuring the customer experience from end to end? So uh, we have we have MPLS with AT&T. We have some other providers too, um, and we are going to. That is monitoring is something that we will have to address. We actually, uh, not even from the point of view of AT&T of us or what. I even had that issue today that when there is a bad call, I'm going to the networking and say, Hey, how is the network? And they are, it's always great, and they said it's not a problem. And it's, I'm looking at link and it looks like it's okay. So pick it, looking at where the issue is, uh, just for making, making sure that we can address the issue quickly is something that we will have to overlay. We were looking at monitoring tools to overlay, to actually pinpoint what the issue is and, and how we can fix it quickly. But, and I think that they have advanced a lot on the monitoring tools based on what we've seen actually here in the expo that we can, they can, we can add that to the service. Yeah, we'll work with AT&T. And, and, and historically, AT&T will work with your other providers as well. Correct, to, get to the troubleshoot. End, to troubleshoot and get the end to end. We don't want, we want to avoid the swivel chair. I, I mean, you might have heard that before between different vendors and stuff. And, and she, BNSF want one throat to choke, so that, that was going to be ours. Yeah. 
Yes, I find it wasn't the link. It's just and at this point, and I have users streaming. So and uh, to, for me, it's like like I told you, quality and customer satisfaction is our goal. So what I want is I don't care whose problem is, it has to be fixed and fixed quickly. So for that, we want to make sure that we have the tools identified and and uh, that AT and T is going to work with whoever to get that problem addressed. Yeah. So specifically, we're going to be using audio codes, and and the audio codes has a really good management and monitoring tool. So, and they're actually connected into our hosted data center. So they will do proactive monitoring of all voice calls going on. They're e-bonded into our ticketing system. Their alerts get raised in our alerts. So, and they, we have one panel, dash panel that we can look at, obviously notify the customer and start troubleshooting that voice. Doesn't matter whose MPLS network it's hanging off of, we have visibility into that call. We, Correct. We, we've done it with two other large-scale global customers. Uh, we're refining it every time we do it because we're learning more. We're getting scar tissue on how to do that. Uh, but yes, we, we've done it with other customers. Correct. That's that's and that's what the support and actually make sure who, that everyone understands what role is is one of the reason also why we move the entire voice infrastructure to AT and T. It's like there is no like I have something on premise and I have some other. No, it's just the whole thing <laughs> there. So at least we have one point of contact to uh, to go to, and they will have to actually work with others. But but we understand we also had to provide the tools, so they had to get the tools to make sure that. That they can identify the problem. So. Yes. Oh, yes. There are several levels, and yeah, we have SLAs, um, and that's why also the, that's that's the why the architecture architecture is so redundant because in order for them to meet the SLAs, they actually uh, had to design it to be completely full redundant. But yeah, we have we have SLAs. I don't know if I can share. <laughs> Yes, and we have we have SLAs for for link, and we have SLAs for the contact centers. Even when the support is is the same, because we we also didn't want to call one 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 a support number for this and one support now. We call one support number, and that person will figure it out where, who, how to route the call. But um, uh, we have different SLAs because, like I told you, in case of the IVR, if you if if the IVR is down. I cannot call crews. The crews don't go to the train. The train stops, and, and the whole thing gets all. It's, it takes days to get the, the, the network back in place. Um, so that is more critical than maybe it's just voice that you can just grab your cellular and, and dial. So there's different SLAs depend on the, the type of um, things that they're running. So it, it, it took quite a while. The agreements was a fun part. Yes, it was. <laughs> We do the HIPs. Mm -hmm. 
ask our hosting group. I don't believe we have from an outage perspective. I, I don't think that was, I mean, we have scar tissue from 2008 with Rolodex shell, which is very publicly known. Um, firewalls, having to patch firewalls from vendors because it was just overloaded and affecting uh, quality of calls. Uh, we had a SQL issue one time uh, and it failed over to the other data center. Uh, but I'm saying we, we, have it, we have that scar tissue. So if you want to hear, hear about running link, you know, what are some of the things that typically happen in an environment that's caused outages or service interruption, stop by the booth, talk to those guys. They'll, they'll give you some real good scar tissue. Well, we haven't started advertising too much because we, we want to make sure that we, to, to someone's point that I was asking about the four years, we want to make sure that we, we don't go massive and, and someone is four years along and they're going to start getting, why I'm not first? And, and I had to show them the map and see, see that it's just like I cannot, you are in the middle here. I cannot take you out until everyone else comes out. So, um, so we wanted to do it like at a side level. We are going to advertise Link 2013 for everyone because that's something that they will be able to get in a, just in a few months, including with the mobility for the IM, that, that part, those kind of things. And they are looking for mobile. They are, they are looking for mobile, uh, most of all corporate. Uh, so corporate users will have a different expectation that what is the feel. Uh, but, but yeah, we're, we're, we're going to try to make, when, when, we, when we go to the site, we're going to try to make a very good like advertising and get them very excited. I, I was in another rollout before. It was actually our operations system. Uh, and we, we, were, um, we went to the sites and, and we had pens and, and baseball uh, hats and, and they were so excited. They were all like willing to participate. So just little things make sometimes a difference. Like, like training with pizza and, and things like that. And everyone, is, yeah, it just makes a big difference. So we're going to take those um, learnings from, from that rollout and actually apply it. Uh, at that time, I, I remember that we did, that's what we want to measure because we did the stats on adoption and, and people that they were have like a higher uh, adoption, they were, they were putting in, I don't know, in some kind of the site, in the dashboard or something, and they were all excited that they were. The, the, the champions of the site. So we're, we're going to tr take some of those learnings and apply when we go and into the rolling of the site. Okay, well thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.